afternoon, everybody. It's um, Darren and the uh, rest of the chemistry innovation team here. We've got uh, Carol Boyer-Spooner, our CEO, Colin Tatum, our projects director, uh, Graham Armstrong, our chairman, and Malcolm Hannaby is with us here at Biz. Um, Malcolm from the Technology Strategy Board. Thanks for joining. Um, with a view to kind of just keeping more noises down from the background, uh, creaking doors and things, I'm going to just try something that should mute uh, all of your lines. If you do have a question to ask, there will be time at the end. If you've got a technical query or, or a specific question, can you send it through to Woof 2? There are two Mark Woofs. Um, neither of them are Mark Woof. Uh, one is ourselves. Uh, with, we're Mark Woof 1. And Maureen Lawton is Mark Woof 2. And she'll be there to help you. Thank you very much. I'm going to mute. All participants have been muted. Okay, I hope everybody can still hear us. Um, can I introduce our chairman, Graham Armstrong, who is going to do the opening uh, slot for this uh, webinar. Um, Graham is chairman of Chemistry Innovation and uh, corporate director for research, development, and innovation at Axon Nobel as well. And he's going to tell us why he's agreed to chair the Formulation Special Interest Group. Okay, Darren, thank you. Um, thanks all for, um, for joining. Very impressive list of, uh, of people have joined this call. I guess the people on the call don't know who else is on the call. Um, we'll put up, put up a, a list later uh, as a report back from the webinar of all the attendees. Uh, but we've got a huge connect co collection of people um, from the academic world, from the world of small, small companies, and from the world of large companies, from the world of institutions. And institutes. It's really impressive to see such a, a good list. Um, a little bit about our, our approach today. Um, clearly, in a webinar, you can only do a certain amount of things. Uh, we really, really try to do uh, and aim to do two or three things today. Firstly, to make sure that people interested in the area of formulation and who are joining this special interest group get brought up to speed with the material and the thinking that's been done to date. I think it's really important in a group to bring everybody to the same sort of area and same sort of level before the, uh, the work starts. And Darren will spend a majority of this call helping us up to bring up to date with the thinking so far. We'll close the, uh, the, the, the call with about a 10 to 15 minute period to allow uh, for, for a question and answer session, which will, uh, which will be very, very helpful. But we're very aware with this many people on a call not all questions and not all thinking will be, ha will be shared or even time to share. So we want to make sure that everybody does get a chance to contribute. And there's a little bit of a trick to the mechanism here, because to get a copy of the uh, formulation interest uh, group slides that are going to be presented, I'm going to ask everybody to send an email to Darren to record that they actually were on the call, get a copy of the slides. That's the gift, so to speak. But also, if you have questions, then to really um, to write them down and make sure that we have them all logged and understood um, and ability to be able to answer them and use them in subsequent meetings. Because I really want to make sure with such a broad industry interest here that everybody gets a chance to have their say, record their questions um, if they don't get a chance to do it verbally, and then we take everybody's point of, point of view on board. So that's the, uh, the sort of process for the day. I'll make a, a few more, more, more remarks of intro. Then we're over to Darren. Uh, then we'll open the, uh, the, uh, the, the line for, for questions and answers. And then I'll close by asking everybody to send an email to Darren to get a co copy of the slides and uh, record any uh, written questions they want to put to the group. OK, Darren, if we could start up. Yeah? So there's the, in there's the agenda as I've been through it. Go to the next slide. Um, I was asked to talk a little bit about the business opportunity, and I, and I don't really want to talk much about the business opportunity because you can see it from the numbers of people on this call today, from pharma, from agroscience, from um, detergents, from um, the, uh, the paint and buildings industry, of course, and, and others. So there's a quite wide variety of people 
um, want to be involved from a business point of view. But really, what is the opportunity? Next slide, Darren. And what is the challenge? Well, many of us have known in, in, the, in the world of formulation that there is a bit of a, a black art of, about formulating. How, how are formulations built? How do you know what they do? Uh, how do you make them do what you want them to do? How do you make them stable? How do you get all the ingredients to work together in an appropriate way? Well, there's a hell of a lot of art to this and a lot of, of buildup of capability in companies over a period of time. The big opportunity, the big technical challenge, is to increasingly build science into this, an understanding of interactions, an understanding of stability, an understanding of performance in very, very complicated chemical systems um, where interactions, the knowledge of colloid science, the knowledge of particle science, the, 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 the vast amounts of maths and informatics needed to be able to interpret data is a big opportunity for us to crack and a big technical challenge we all face. Moving on to the second part of the technical challenge and then to why there's a huge opportunity for us as a, as a, as a country in the UK is, well, with that high amount of empiricism in formulating, with an opportunity to make it more science-based, um, there is an opportunity to really speed up the processes of formulation, be it doing the experimentation itself, being it interpreting the data, being able to, it, to, to do um, incredibly well um, formulated experimental design. All of those are things that we share as a community. And if we could do faster, we can bring our products our information to market far quicker than, than we could today. And in that, I think there's quite a national opportunity. The UK, I think many of us recognize, is probably next to the United States where more formulating gets done than just about any other country I can think of, be it in all of these industries we're, we're dealing with. So there's a national opportunity based on the types of industry we have here, and secondly, the academic and, um, and technical skills to be able to really speed our formulation effort up. And finally, of course, this is not just about big companies talking to big companies. The real opportunity in formulating is to help, perhaps where there are smaller companies who have a really incredible piece of technology but can't understand how to see whether it's relevant in the world of detergents or it's relevant in the world of foods, etc to find a quick route into formulating, a quick route into testing, such that their capability is understood and, and communicated in a language that many other com <coughs> companies can use. So the big opportunity for us, I think, as a country is we've got a lot of formulators here. They all want to do things quickly and fast and efficiently. And thirdly, we're blessed with a, with a wide range of, of academic and, and university capability spinning off many small companies that can find a way into formulating and providing ingredient and other help. Uh, and this uh, formulating arena or um, ability to put together a formulation network might just make that far more, more speedy. So I'm really delighted to be involved in this. I've offered to chair the special interest group as best I can and make sure that the wide variety of people are introduced into this. Yeah. With that, I'll hand it over to Darren to tell you about where we've got to so far. Thank you very much, Graham. Um, I'm going to start by just giving a quick overview of how I see the situation or how we see the situation in UK formulation and actually celebrate some, some good news that has happened over the last couple of years. We, we know there's a need for a formulation special interest group, um, but that's very much building on activity that's happened uh, by various stakeholders on, on this line right now. Um, firstly, I, I, I think we need to highlight that formulation is now very much part of the Technology Strategy Board's uh, thinking and the national um, strategy and agenda. Um, the High Value Manufacturing Strategy was released a couple of months ago, and within their formulation, so the understanding and design and manufacture of all formulated product, products for relevant sectors across the supply chain is in there as a key competency. Um, I think it, we need to be clear sometimes um, 
people's definitions and understanding of high value manufacturing isn't isn't always clear or always the same but I think it's important to point out that manufacturing in this sense is as much about the product design and making things like personal care products cosmetics pharmaceuticals um, as it is manufacturing might be interpreted more about kind of engineering widgets um, and cars and uh, things like that I think it's important to say we, we played a big part in getting formulation up there um, on the agenda, but it wasn't it didn't just come from our community. Um, it came from via um, consultation that the Institute for Manufacturing did on behalf of the Technology Strategy Board to towards their high value manufacturing strategy. Um, the catapult centers, the consultations that were associated with the development of the strategy for that, the formulation came up again. Um, and our industries have already leveraged a significant proportion of TSB funding across programs and calls that weren't necessarily formulation specific, but there was, there was formulation opportunities in there. So the message has got through um, and, and we're much further ahead than we were a couple of years ago. Uh, just a reminder of what the Technology Strategy Board is about and where its activities um, lie. So this is the uh, TRL scale. And Technology Strategy Board is very much that kind of innovation section between TRL 3 and 7. Uh, but there's some overlaps at the earlier discovery and research at TRL 1 to 3, which is predominantly carried out in universities and funded by research councils. And then the kind of later commercialization stage, uh, pre predominantly uh, funded by business directly. Outside of the Technology Strategy Board, I think it's important to uh, point out that the EPSRC agenda, um, there is lots of activity within there that supports the formulation community. Um, it's great news that the University of Birmingham's engineering, pro doctoral, engineering doctorate program uh, in formulation engineering uh, won the Queen's anniversary prize last year, and they've got um, a, a huge program of uh, research activity. I think there's 45 to 50 uh, doctoral training students uh, within that program servicing companies across various sectors, food, um, minerals, uh, home and personal care, coatings, the list goes on. Um, within the EPSRC strategy as well, there was a recent call for Centres for Innovative Manufacturing. Um, I think that's watch this space essentially, but the key point there is that formulation was very much in scope as an opportunity to uh, uh, get a centre funded. And finally, there, are, there have been lots of other university industry interface um, centers, I suppose, um, set up within several universities, complementing many of those that already exist. Um, so Durham and Edinburgh in soft materials, uh, Imperial in modeling, and Manchester in process technology. This is all complementing the, the well-known and established centers we know, like Leeds, uh, Birmingham, um, Bristol. Uh, Sorry if I haven't mentioned your university, but we've got a good base there. Um, and also, our networks are very strong. Um, Intelligent Formulation was launched a couple of years ago and has um, moved to a sustainable model servicing industry needs. And now I know they're more than a network. They support industry and skills development and um, project building and consulting as well. There's ourselves, the, the Chemistry Innovation Knowledge Transfer Network. Um, and obviously, we're, we're complemented um, by the long-established subject groups within the RSC, ICME and SCI. Um, clearly, there's formulation groups within RSC and SCI. Oh, sorry, RSC and ICME, but there's also lots of other groups that are relevant in particles, colloids, um, rheology. Um, there's some positive activity happening in the last six to 12 months around skills and training, uh, led by cogent and intelligent formulation. And I'll come on to that in a minute. And as a lot of you know, I've been speaking to you about the Formulation Centre over the last year or so. So actually, a lot, there's a lot good happening in, this, in the formulation space. Um, so why do we need a special interest group? I think it's still very difficult to, what, what is a broad community to define the UK priorities and strategy, um, technology strategy board via this special interest group are asking for steer and looking for steer, but we've got a very broad range of stakeholders and often we get different opinions and views from within the same companies even. Um, and we also need to coordinate 
um, this strategy with the EPSRC strategy. So it's, it's no mean feat, really, um, pulling that information together that serves the needs of the big, the small, and the, the cross-sector. It's also not a new area of science and technology, so that we've actually got a very well-established knowledge base within companies, within universities, but it's, it's all a little bit fragmented. It's not particularly strategically aligned. And uh, trying to re-engineer this capability, it's, it's, it's probably easier to start again with, if, with new technologies like nanotechnology or industrial biotechnology. When you've got an established area like formulation, um, it's a little bit harder. And also for the smaller companies, all that expertise is very widely distributed and it's very hard to know where to find it. Finally, we still need some better mechanisms to kind of facilitate and elaborate, uh, enable collaborations. Um, the KTNs, we do what we can do. Um, other organizations, Intelligent Formulation, do what they can do. But actually, it takes a very concerted and targeted effort to bring together the cross-sector collaborations that are needed and the linkages with supply chain partners and SMEs in particular. So that's why we need a formulation, TSB formulation special interest group. Um, this is the wording taken from the official documentation that basically tells you what a TSB special interest group is. So they're national overarching networks. Um, it's about bringing together the vari a variety of relevant stakeholders. This is very business and industry led. It's about innovation and growth but obviously it's about bringing together all the other relevant stakeholders within universities, research organizations, etc. And the primary objective of a special interest group is about stimulating innovation, taking actions to stimulate innovation, or taking actions to enable um, stimulation of innovation. A couple of examples of, I think there's about 11 special interest groups, and there's a couple of examples of current ones within the Technology Strategy Board portfolio. Um, I'll, I'll, uh, if you're interested in those, you can have a look on Connect and find out more information. So this is our formulation special interest group. So it will be funded and owned by the Technology Strategy Board, and it will be coordinated by ourselves, Chemistry Innovation Knowledge Transfer Network. We're going to have key delivery partners, Intelligent Formulation, um, Centre for Process Innovation as part of the High Value Manufacturing Catapult, um, the RSC, the ICME, and Cogent um, have all um, we've been in talks with all of these parties over the last couple of weeks and months to uh, work out how we can uh, serve the community. I think this is a response really to um, a call for we need we need better joined up approach and provision and service for for this sector. I think this is this is our response to that. Um, it's going to be nine months of concerted activity starting from this month. Uh, but there is scope for extension. As I said before, this, the idea of this special interest group is to provide leadership and focal point on the innovation agenda, the UK formulation innovation agenda. Um, some of the more specific objectives, I think most of the activity is really around accelerating the work that's already been carried out around a national formulation centre, and I'll give some more detail on that in a minute. Uh, but we're keen to kind of set um, and define a broader formulation agenda. It's about communicating and articulating industry needs, particularly to the Technology Strategy Board, but um, other research councils um, as well. And it's about stimulating collaborative working, uh, particularly in cross-sector uh, projects or supply chain projects, and supporting SMEs as well, because we know it's we know it's harder for those smaller companies to engage. This is what the uh, Formulation Special Interest Group will deliver, a proposal and a business plan and an industry-led consortium for a national formulation center, um, a more overarching national plan for formulation, and an associated um, community and industry leadership group, uh, particularly of senior industry figures in there. And practically, we want to define and develop project consortia, uh, collaborative R&D projects, um, and technology strategy boards, you know, they're keen that this special interest group helps to define and give steer on how they can support the formulation community with their program. Um, Malcolm's got penciled into his um, uh, plan for next year, a technology strategy board collaborative R&D competition in formulation. 
Um, the budget's not set. We can't say for sure that's going to happen, but at the moment it's, it's penciled in there. Um, so it's for this community to really, via this mechanism, to define that call and give Technology Strategy Board every bit of ammunition and evidence that, that a call in this area is needed. Um, and finally, the Special Interest Group will also come up with some recommendations for follow-on activity, um, and that will capture, as, as well as recommendations around the centre and projects building, we're going to look at um, skills training as well, and, and any other recommendations that enable the uh, innovation agenda. So this is how we're structured. Um, formulation centre work package. I put broader access because it's important that a national formulation centre actually leverages um, expertise from around the UK. It's not about all work being done within this centre. Um, a national centre should be signposting and mapping and um, steering people towards existing capabilities. So it's important to, to get that point across. Uh, work package two, project building. Work package three, skills and training. I think it's just important to point out that the skills and training bit isn't really the technology strategy board or KTN agenda. Uh, we're more about innovation. But when we were kind of engineering this um, activity, we, we realized it's, it's kind of hard to try and tackle formulation, innovation, uh, without trying to look holistically at the skills and training element as well. The two are kind of interweaved in each other. And so whilst the SIG isn't necessarily going to fund massive amounts of activity in this area, I'm pleased to say that cogent and intelligent formulation and some of the professional bodies are going to uh, take the lead um, on that activity, um, and it will be kind of within the SIG, within the SIG, but uh, funded from elsewhere and led from elsewhere. Um, and then across the bottom, it's key that we map the science and technology needs and gaps, and that should come out from, it's about, formula, it's about formally capturing those uh, needs, and that should come out from the other work packages. Um, across the top, we've got an industry leadership group, and it's important that we've got a strategic uh, dissemination and communication plan as well. So that central SIG management bit will be done by Chemistry Innovation. Um, work package one. The Formulation Centre, I've said what that's going to deliver. That will be led by Chemistry Innovation. That will be led by myself. Our key delivery partner will be the Centre for Process Innovation in there. Um, they've, that we think they're the best people to write the business plan for the centre. I should reiterate that we're, we're keen to look at how this centre could be part of the catapult, um, TSB catapult, the high value manufacturing catapult. We're not sure if it should or if it shouldn't yet. That should come out through the process, but we're, we're keen to explore that opportunity. If it's not the right option, then we'll, we'll, we'll look again. Um, before I get into the timeline, I think I just want to have five or six slides to update you on our current thinking around the Formulation Centre. So actually, we've done a lot of work on this in the last year. Um, it was a te top 10 deliverable set for chemistry innovation to deliver a science-based formulation centre, and our target date was March, is still March 2013, uh, but we've, we've done, been on international missions, we've had company visits, consultation, and various workshops to define the thinking, and this uh, proposal that we've got so far is uh, supported by our Innovation Strategy Board, which is um, essentially uh, senior leaders from, in, from across the chemistry using industries, and actually this proposal is, is largely why, why we've got the SIG uh, in the first place. Uh, a few thoughts on what makes a national centre. Um, we're keen that it complements and levers and networks existing national assets, but a centre needs some sort of core, novel, cap unique capability of its own. We're keen that the UK companies served by the centre aren't just the kind of big 10, 15 companies. We need to have a mechanism that serves and supports uh, smaller companies, and by supply chain companies, I guess it should be clear, we're talking about the ingredients that go into formulations, and we're talking about the enabling technologies, the, the measurement, the modeling, the process technologies that support the um, development, design, and manufacture of formulations. Um, so in that sense, you can imagine a pretty broad offering, and the overall vision should be ambitious. But what we've said is, actually, you can't start um, trying to do be all things to all people when you need a bit of an initial focus. 
So our initial focus, our phase one focus is this, um, an open access physical hub for formulation uh, with core capabilities in formulation science measurement, experimental design and data management, and high throughput or medium throughput platform and workflow design. Um, this isn't about high throughput to do kind of routine screening, routine development, doing a thousand experiments and stumbling upon your um, optimum uh, system. This is about using these capabilities to do a mechanistic best studies, so kind of delivering a step change in the, uh, I guess, kind of TRL3-ish mechanistic studies of complex formulations. Um, so take, for example, the kind of the mechanism of why emulsions form. We've got lots of simplistic models, but when you put a kind of six, seven, eight, nine, ten ingredient system together, um, when those systems fail and how those various components interact, it's, it's, it's difficult to deconvolute. So we think that using advanced robotics and automation techniques and advanced data handling can help to overcome that as well as advanced measurement. Some, the next point is a bit more of a development need. Um, it's about the We've, a lot of companies have got high throughput capabilities, um, but it's about using them more intelligently. Um, when you're designing a completely new system, um, the options, the number of experiments you could do are millions. We need to use intelligent design, ex intelligent experimental design and data management to bring that down to uh, thousands of experiments or hundreds. And this is all really essentially driving a, a, a best driving best practice and a step change approach to program design. This is the model. Um, I should say a lot of the content, we're quite content heavy in these slides. This is because we want the slides to be sent out and make sense um, and have enough information for people to make sense of them afterwards. So, I, so I'm going to skip through relatively quickly through the rest of the slides. But this is the model. Uh, essentially, a company will come to the center. They'll have a technical problem. The center will, as a national center, help to identify where the project would best be done. It might be um, wholly done within the center. It might be done at a partner, um, a university elsewhere. Um, it might be that it needs a combination of a university or an SME and the center. But it's very much about uh, generating collaborative projects. And it's about the companies getting into the center and actually doing some of the work there themselves. Um, so it's open access facility, but with some dedicated, um, flexible project scientists delivering the enabling capability. Key benefits, access to enabling capabilities. Um, it's a platform for developing, pooling, and retaining highly skilled niche expertise. Um, it's a platform for cross-sector collaborations. Because of the open model, it, it's a platform for accessing expertise from across the UK value chain, um, possibly expertise within uh, non-competing formulation companies um, as well. A coating expert may be able to help a farmer expert. Um, and we want, we're going to engineer the center so that it actually services uh, formulators with lower tech needs, lower tech um, needs. So I guess a lot of people are looking at what I've presented so far and think, well, that, we, that's a bit, we don't really need all that, actually. We, we need access to a rheometer or a, a particle characterization system. As the center builds up the capability and the technology within it, um, the model would work so that access is possible uh, for all companies. I won't go into these all in full detail, but just to say that we kind of, on our consultation, come up with areas of where we know companies want to do projects and the types of projects that might be done in the centre. Um, they might be large cross-sector consortia-based projects, or they could be company-specific projects. So there's there's no prerequisite that you need to be doing pre-competitive uh, cross-sector collaborations. You can just go in and do your own project. So as I said, I think we need to, to we, I mean, we could spend another year defining the center. Um, a lot of work has been done, and there's, there's a momentum behind what's been defined so far. And we think the way forward is um, we've got the seeds of a consortium. Um, and the aim is to develop this kind of hybrid model for this center. So a small physical hub, 
uh, that provides management and collaboration space, um, but it can grow. Um, and essentially, all the coordination between this hub and delivery partners and the alliance of delivery partners is managed through that central hub. Um, and so the delight, I guess it's kind of hub and spoke model. So expertise for the center will come from universities, companies, SMEs, wherever that expertise, um, where, wherever it's world leading or, or the best in the UK anyway. Um, and as I've said before, and a really interesting part of this model is that some of that expertise, <coughs> we, a lot of companies we spoke to have kind of said, you know, there would be certain enabling technologies that, you know, they'd be prepared to share. I should reiterate, it's not really about collaborating on the product. I think everybody has agreed that there's not much scope for collaborating on specific products. It's, it's more about enabling capability, enabling design tools. Um, and then associated to that is a integrated community of practice. So this is, uh, I guess, a kind of virtual network, but very carefully and uh, managed um, about facilitating cross-sector sharing of needs and best practice. Uh, this, this is effectively a, a mechanism for defining what projects or what capital um, uh, investments are made in the center as we go along. We're, we're wary that a lot of companies' needs aren't really about new technology, or not all of their needs are about new technology. Some, sometimes it's about just sharing know-how. Um, how, 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 how do you best use your, your high throughput kit, or, or how do you do this measurement or that measurement? So we've got some themes and areas where we believe the center communities of practice would, uh, would, would start. So this is a kind of schematic. It's, it's, this is illustrative as in terms of where the ex what expertise is going to be in the center and uh, where it would come from. But this, this kind of gives you a, a feel for what model we're, we're looking at. And this is to get the center up and running, remember. This, this isn't the be all and end all of it. It, it can grow from here, but this, this, is, this is the starting point. We believe the way to do it is to get larger companies to commit resource or expertise or money um, to put into the center. And against that, we would leverage public funding uh, to cover the costs for the involvement of uh, universities or SMEs, uh, to cover the costs of central management and facility management. As I said before, what I've described so far is, is a starting point. We've got to start somewhere. Um, so that's phase one, really, enabling design tools, specific, um, specialist design capability, and a platform for project building. Um, but we're wary, and on our consultation, we know there are a lot of other interests and things people will be looking to get out of the center. Um, we asked ourselves the question, well, what, what would be unique? Or what are companies willing to invest in? and what are the, what the government w would likely to invest in. And that's why we, we prioritized um, what I've described so far. But via this formulation special interest group process, there will be opportunities to kind of define other, um, the future vision of the center. So back to the action plan. So in the light blue, we've got the phase one uh, stream. So over the next three to four months, we're going to um, develop the technical specification of this center. We're going to get a uh, working groups together, first of all, but they will define the spe technical specification, the business model, and the consortium building activity will happen. And those three areas are kind of interlinked, really, uh, but you might need slightly different individuals from companies to, to kind of input at those different levels. At the end of October, we're going to have a sanity check and look at what funding options there are to get what we've defined so far up and running, the catapult may be an option, as I've said before, uh, and that will lead into a delivery phase. Um, and at the end of the special interest group activity, we'll 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 see where we are. But we, it would be timely to look at the funding of uh, any refinements to that um, phase one activity. Um, and then underneath, in the next month or two, we're keen to get your inputs on well, what else should the centre do? I don't think the thinking. As, is, a, is as advanced, um, but we need to start that process in terms of understanding uh, what else should be in there. And um, you know, if there's a critical mass of interest and uh, a strong pull for something else, you know, th this process will uh, make sure it gets in there. 
I'm not going to read all of this out, but this have a look at this afterwards. But this is basically a breakdown of how we see the working groups for de developing the centre. Um, and on down on the left is kind of what I think the position that the different companies are taking at the moment. So ranging from the top, which is we're very keen, we really want a piece of this, um, to the third level, which is saying, well, we're we're interested in the centre, but can it do? Can it do this instead? Um, and then at the bottom, obviously, there's a kind of mapping e exercise where everyone and anyone who's got some capability or a um, expertise that they think can support this centre, we need to map that and we need to make sure it works, goes through our process and the right delivery partners um, deliver this centre. So that's the centre. Um, work package two is about project building. Um, Essentially, we've said if you've got a centre, that's all very well and good, but you need to actually do something in it. Uh, so a big chunk of this activity is around developing project consortia uh, for doing projects within the centre. Uh, but we're equally keen that you can develop projects that are done outside of the centre as well. You know, this is, this is a kind of national programme, and we're wary that um, there will be stuff that, that doesn't need the, the novel centre capability. So Hilda Coolsey, from chemistry, who's uh, working for us at Chemistry Innovation, is going to take a lead on this programme uh, with support from key partners listed there. Um, so the next month or two, the, the key partners are going to get together and define what this project building programme looks like, but you can imagine it's a mixture of targeted workshops, uh, company visits, uh, but our aim is to have an initial workshop at some point in September. So you should hear more about that within a couple of weeks. Um, and then as ideas for projects kind of get more and more focused, we'll, we'll have a more kind of targeted service, if you like, where we work with specific companies or part, uh, consortia to actually develop their ideas and get them to a point where you could actually, uh, it, there's enough detail to actually uh, get funding for this, these types of projects. Again, we're keen to focus um, the themes, that are the areas that our projects are going to um, tackle. So we've done a lot of background work to this and, and we're keen that the workshops that, and the activities, uh, we've, we've had a lot of consultation, we've got a, lot, a good idea of what people's interests are. So you can imagine areas like stability, um, that's, that's a big one that's coming out. We're, we'll probably do something around that. Um, but we've, we've essentially, we're, we're kind of halfway through the, the process in terms of defining projects, and, and now it's about delivery. In alignment with the project building and the networking activity, um, we've been speaking to the RSC, who have this mechanism for partnership building. Uh, it's something they've applied in the pharmaceutical area. We don't think it's core to the SIG's aims, but we think it's complementary. So David Fox, who's leading that activity, uh, will, will be keen to get your feedback on what a partnering workshop, the target is December, would look like. And that's very much, if, if our workshops or the SIG workshops are more kind of focused and thematic, the partnering workshop is, is a bit more of an open, um, serendipitous process. Um, so we think the two complement each other, but just to say, you know, it's not a, it's not necessarily a key part of the SIG, but we're very keen to collaborate on this area. This is the slide for the workshop. I won't read through all of that, but just to reiterate that it's complementary to the themed project building workshop. So here's how you can engage. Um, we want feedback on the project building activities. Um, themes, project building activities. Um, we want your support if you can provide access to your networks or your venues or your, you can co-host an event with us. Very keen to collaborate on that. Um, and if you join our Connect group, we'll get updates. Um, if you've got some very specific project ideas that you want to uh, develop, then again, please get in touch with us directly. Um, work package three, skills and training, intelligent formulation. Jim Bullock's going to take a lead on this. Um, with the key partners in this area, cogent professional bodies, RSCI, Chemie, and others. 
Um, the first phase is really about providing an update on what the current thinking intelligent formulation and cogent have done a lot of work in this area and providing an update on their current thoughts on what the needs are. Um, and it's about getting some early SIT support via the SIG for their gold standard uh, program and their formulation academy proposal. Um, but we, we know that that's not the be all and end all of the skills needs, or we think, suspect that's not the be all and end all. So over the course of the SIG, we're key to kind of, we're keen to have a kind of very broad consultation and, and, and look at this area more strategically and come up with some recommendations for tackling the skills and training agenda. I don't think the SIG is going to solve all the problems in this area, but it can, it can at least come up with some, some ideas and recommendations of solutions. So Jim's going to uh, host, well, the plan is to host a webinar in August in this area. Um, I'm getting a bit of a nudge to, uh, to hurry, uh, hurry along a bit, so I'm sorry that I can't go in more into this detail, but essentially this, this is the activity that's, um, that's being done now and being proposed within the next couple of months. And again, essentially, we want you to join working groups in this in this area, uh, whether you're a skills or a training needs person, someone who's a user, or whether you're a provider, um, and whether your interests are in the specific activities around gold standards and academy, or whether you're, you've got um, other interests. Finally, and this is this is less a working group for engaging with. I suppose this this is more a part of the process where, again, intelligent formulation and Jim's going to take a lead on this, but we actually map um, the skill, the science and technology needs in the formulation area in the UK, um, and that should come out from the consultations um, across the other working groups. Uh, so the initial emphasis is for to develop that map and populate it with uh, existing intelligence, which we've got a lot of. Uh, we want to test that with the broad community, but then as the process goes along, we want to update it. Um, a key point, if, if, if there's going to be a technology strategy board collaborative R&D call in this area, then we need to get some input in around November time. Um, and then at the end of the project, we'll, we'll have another update and we'll have a, a working science and technology needs, a working document. Quick point on the industry leadership group. Um, I think you've got a rough idea of what that should do. You know, it's about um, owning this activity. It's about providing a kind of steering, not necessarily doing all the work, but definitely steering it and leading it and giving this uh, special interest group um, presence and championing it within your own companies and outside of your company. So Graham essentially is the chair and the lead on that. Originally, our plan was to pull that list and that group together early on in the process, but we got to a list of about 35 people and realized that this is going to be a little bit tricky to actually, who, who do you get in there, who do you leave out, and, and we decided we wanted to grow that group a bit more gradually. So our kind of compromise is that over the next month, we're going to identify champions for the specific work packages, again, senior industry people, um, and then as the SIG activity particularly within the work groups, happens and builds, it should become very clear who should um, and shouldn't be on that industry steering group. Um, we'd hope to have that, well, we will have that group in place for a physical meeting in October. Um, and come the end of the SIG, we, we want that group signing off the recommendations and taking ownership of, of what comes out of the process. Um, we are keen to get the right spread of sectors and we're keen to get the right people who are supportive of UK formulation, not necessarily your specific company's needs. Um, and, and we want people who are, who not necessarily themselves, but their companies are active within the work packages. But if you are keen and you, you see yourself as a champion or a high level, or sorry, industry leadership group person, we want, we want you to get in touch with us, please. So just to reiterate, that's, that's the structure and that's, that's the plan. Just to summarize, the, the SIG is now live um, and it's about aligning the community behind the national innovation agenda and about building on existing activities and levering support from existing initiatives. The key outputs are a proposal for a formulation center, the development of collaborative R&D projects and other recommendations 
for technology strategy board and other bodies um, in areas such as skills. The next step, the, like Graham said at the start, we want you to uh, send your emails to us telling you, telling us if you've got any questions or what level of, of interest you have. Essentially, we want you to join our working groups. We want your feedback on uh, themes for workshops. Um, we'll get our Connect group up and running in the next week or so. It's not there yet, uh, but all the relevant uh, information and updates will be on there. And also, we want you to uh, promote this slide pack as widely and this activity as widely to your colleagues and communities as possible, um, particularly within the UK. Are there any questions? All participants have been unmuted. Uh, are there any questions, please? please. Hello, Darren. It's um, Simon Gibbard here. Could I ask a question? Yes, please, Simon. Go Hi, ahead. Darren. I was interested in the, the higher-level industry group and the multi-level slide you showed with the colours, where you seem to sort of have almost sort of platinum partners that was down as being three to five industries, and then you drop down in levels. I was just trying to understand how those two sort of high-level industry group and those people you were talking about there are related. So I'm gonna, I'll, I'll cover that. I, the, the issue or the opportunity rather with, uh, with formulation is there are so many interested parties that maybe unlike other special interest group where there were maybe three or four very key, clear and key players, you can, you can define a special interest group and the industry partners very easily. It's not so easy here. So I mean, even on this call, I was you know, sort of counting it up. We've got six pharma companies. We've got three from soap and detergents. We've got four from broader chemical industries. We've got two agroscience. We've got six providers, six universities. I mean, picking the, picking the winners at this point in time is A, unfair, and B, political suicide, frankly. So the right thing, I think, to do is to try and let everybody make their point and have a say. And I guess and there's a little bit of a competition in this, those who speak most, those who ask the most helpful questions, I, I will say helpful questions, yeah? those who um, contribute to the working groups and want to be part of forming the solution, will get the biggest say by definition. Yeah? So we've been very obtuse in a way about saying who's going to speak at the final um, sort of platinum table because it's really up to the activities of those on the call and who participate, Simon, yeah? So yep. it's not about just big companies or the loudest universities or the most sexy of new small startups. It's those who contribute the most will ultimately get the biggest say. Yep. Thanks, Graham. Now, I, mean, I think the idea of um, letting it grow that way will also probably grow the community of practice because, as you say, the people who are actually actively involved become naturally that community of practice. Indeed. Okay, thanks, Simon. Any more questions? Yes, it's David Higgins here. Um, basically, the formulation center, is that really going to become another university? And indeed, how does it relate to the universities that are already doing formulation work anyway? Hi, David. Um, it's not going to be another university. Um, it's uh, going to be a center that leverages expertise from existing universities. Okay. It's Think of it as an innovation hub. It's a place you go to to make the connections, to be inspired, to be guided in the uh, the best people to work from. It's the spider in the web con concept. Okay, in which case, how do you get over the, sec the secrecy arrangements here? Because companies, large companies in particular, if they want to develop a new formulation, um, are they going to come to a hub like this yep. and talk to another, you know, a number of small companies where the, the, the whole concept is going to be um, taken up by a dozen and one different people, if you're not careful. 
Well, there, there, there's lots of uh, that we can we can deal with that in the mechanism by which the uh, the hub works. Um, there are all sorts of fluid examples of having discrete one-on-one -on -one conversations where they are bounded by total secrecy, through to being absolutely open and fluid and open to all. If you talk to the guys from um, from CPI, for example, I think some of them are on the call. They'll yeah. tell you they're more than able to handle wide open multi-party um, initiatives, but equally so, absolutely Chinese walls, one company with CPI working on one thing. It's the, it's the way the world goes around. So I think it's really quite able to be university-like when it needs to be, and then very commercial and very closed if it needs to be. It'll depend on the product, on the, on the subject. Okay, yeah, the CPI is a good example. Thank you. Are there any more questions, please? No more for no more? Well, th there is another one from me that's going through my mind here, and that's finance. How is, it, how is the whole thing going to be finance? Um, because I'm a member of the Algol Bioenergy Special Interest Group, and there, it's not just a TSB, it's a TSB and NERC, the Natu Natural Environment Research Council that had joined forces together to create the Algol Bioenergy Special Interest Group. And here, it's just the TSB and the KTN. Um, so, how do you foresee, where do you get the funding from? Is it I all from the TSB? I, th I think it's important to point out that the process towards defining delivering the center, yes, that's the KTM uh, thing. It's a SIG thing. It's intelligent formulation. It's uh, RSC ICME. Um, the ultimate delivery of the center, um, it could be a combination of private, public, finance. It, well, it, it almost certainly will. It, um, it could be technology strategy board in partnership with industry but, and EPSRC as well. We don't know. I don't think we answer yet, David, but that's, I guess that's the point of the process, really. Personally, I'd be very disappointed if it was entirely public funding. I think yeah. if, the, if the big companies, and, and I will speak for one of them, who, quite frankly, if this centre had been in existence the last few, uh, the last few weeks, we had a, we had a million uh, euro contract to spend, very, very simply, uh, because it wasn't available, we have to go and do it ourselves. I think the guys in Unilever are uh, understanding that actually, and are probably leading another number of companies in deciding that external placement of funding is a better way to do it than internal placement. So I think this is going to be public. I think it will be a high pr pr proportion of project-based private funding as well. And I guess if it isn't, we haven't done it right. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Any, any more final Burning, hugely important question. There must be one. <laughs> well, with that, then um, I, I thank everybody for their uh, their participation. It, it will be, as um, as Simon pointed out, I think uh, this is going to be a community of practice. Those who make the most will get the most say and um, and guide us. <clears throat> and I'd really appreciate an active involvement in the work groups and then in our October meetings. So. Please contact uh, Darren with uh, the, uh, the the email link and the need for the the presentation. Add your questions to it, and please, if interested, really volunteer to be in one of the uh, the four work package groups. The the it'll only be as good as the collective input. So, really would appreciate those uh, those inputs as soon as is possible.